Happy Deepavali indeed. Now, welcome back, Malaysia. What we have in front of us um, are recycled items. And I'm looking at this. This this just completely intrigues me. Yes. So, basically, um, we are talking about out of the carton competition, yes. Tetra Pak. Uh, let's say hello to the guests for today, Matthias Gabber, the green man himself, and Manjula Murugesan, the environment manager. Thank you yeah, very much. This is nice. I could do this at home. It's a pencil case. Yes. And it's... it's when, when you look at it, it's like common sense. Why didn't people, people think of it? And one of the <laughs> first prize winner for the Tetra Pak of the Carter competition is the Chinese lamp, the Chinese folding lamp, right? The, the, the folding, folding night lamp. Yeah. Wow. Folding light yeah. lamp. So um, maybe the camera could focus on that more. So let's talk about the competition. How long has been has it been going on? Uh, maybe Manjula. Manju, can I call you Manju? Yes, <laughs> such a, you may. It's such a cute name. <laughs> Manju. Oh, yes, thank you. Manju. You're getting into the Diwali moon. Yes, you? I know. <laughs> okay. Well, um, the competition uh, was initiated in June uh -huh. this year uh, and we launched it on Facebook. Right. And a lot, um, all the submissions were done on, um, via online. Oh wow! And there were two categories for this um, for this competition, and it was divided into the junior and senior category. So the junior category is more for kids aged between six to twelve, mm -hmm. okay. and the senior category we were targeting um, the uh, the, um, the students from universities and colleges. Right. Because okay. yeah, that's virtually um, an untapped audience when it comes to most of our environmental yes, initiatives. Right. So we thought this um, competition would be a good way of reaching out to, to that particular age group and see what they can come up with when it comes to creativity and innovation well, uh, with an environmental theme. You've got a lot of creativity here, I can yes. see. I mean, nobody would thought, you know, a, a Milo pack could become a pencil, a pencil case. case. Uh, yeah. This is absolutely amazing. So let's talk about the um, the winning winning uh, entry. Now this is not the winning entry. You have the winning entry. Which uh, could you just share with us what exactly was the winning entry for the whole competition? Well, the winning entry for the senior category it's this one, uh -huh. the folding night lamp. Yep. It's done by Lee Ji Tang mm -hmm. from the Malaysian Institute of Art. All right. Um, and uh, unfortunately, I couldn't bring the junior category first prize winner because it's like this big. <laughs> um, it's called the Doll House, uh -huh. and it was really well done. And she cut every single wow. piece of little bits of cartons and she stuck them all together. Wow. She made little cupboards, mm. windows, doors, all with, with even the doll dress was Amazing. made out of uh, made out of cartons. Mm. Meticulous, very meticulous. meticulous I have to ask, Matthias, yeah. where are you in this? How did you get in this? <laughs> I have it has the to pleasure, be a green thing here, isn't yeah, it? I have to be the I had the pleasure to be asked by Tetra Pak to be one of the judges awesome. of the competition. Okay. So uh, and uh, I gave as well some talks uh -huh. uh, at a a pre-event where we the Tetra Pak was doing capacity building and awareness yeah. raising yeah. on you know how we can all make this work from a green angle right. and uh, what it means for the planet and the environment so I had the pleasure to actually look at all of these designs mm -hmm. and uh, even during the judging day speak with the students mm -hmm. and the juniors and, and that was the most beautiful thing you know talking with them realizing what wow, they put a lot of thought into it uh, especially some of the very young kids who yes. did the elaborate uh, uh, toy things. Right. They were already, their environmental awareness was there. They were so excited that they could use something that was waste and turn it into something valuable. Mm -hmm. So even for me, it was inspirational to be involved and to, to see the whole thing uh, work from an initial idea to having products like this that yes. could even become you know a functional product yeah. yes. out there in a shop maybe even in a charity shop or in a commercial shop yes. where then suddenly when it becomes a, a real product that people use out there uh, we get economies of scale and loads of this can be reused in such a simplistic manner okay Matthias statistics how much do we draw um, uh, especially, um, you're opening a floodgate asking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's not gonna stop. <laughs> people, people need to understand that, you know, um, I think a lot of people do know that we waste a lot. Um, yeah. But how, um, what, how much do we 
really wet. Really wet. I, I, I think the statistics are like every five days we're filling up the Petronas Twin Towers with the waste that we are generating mm. in Malaysia. Every five days. Yeah, so it's, it's a huge amount and uh, the recycling rate in Malaysia is quite low. I can't remember the exact figure. It's about 5% I think, yeah. national rates. Mm. Yeah. So it is actually a very, very low rate and a lot can be done. I mean, mm -hmm. we talked previously about the condo recycling system. Yep. We did as well. We had Tetra Pak on the show before, mm -hmm. all aimed to inspire people to get more conscious about That's that right. a lot of our what we throw away can be reused yeah. or you know avoiding the waste in the first place is yes. another option as well yeah. uh, that we should focus on so we still have a lot of work to do in Malaysia in this area that's why we need things like that we need the support from corporates that actually make this an issue right. and with that raise the awareness from the young people to the uh, students even to the business people and the general public out there we can make a contribution. Everyone at home, it starts today. You can make a green, deeper valley as well, you know. <laughs> yes, wishing yes. you all a happy, eco-friendly yes, deeper, deeper valley, valley. hopefully. I, so I, even like, in all like, areas. I didn't expect you know. lesser than that. <laughs> 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 so so Matthias, we could come up with that. As an example, you know, if you go to friends and family house, bring your own Tupperware. Why, yeah? Because <laughs> containers... You want to tap all the ladoos, huh? Yeah, because <laughs> instead of putting it in, in mm. what do you call that, polythenes or... Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, true. Bring your um, own food container, that's a bit... It's a bit odd when you go to Bali <laughs> with a food container. Yeah. Like, can I put some for my family? Yeah, that's my food container. Please, please. <laughs> Load it up with the yes. lettuce. <laughs> now, Manjula, as the environment manager, um, yes. what are the other initiatives that you know, mm -hmm. you've done to bring awareness? As Matai said, people, the recycling rate is really low yeah. in, in here compared yeah. to any other country. Yes. Uh, so what are the other initiatives that you've done? Um, a lot of our initiatives are focused on recycling. Um, and we work with a lot of stakeholders mm -hmm. like the government, local authorities, schools, now universities, colleges, yeah. local communities and a lot of the initiatives are focused on to empower the kids, mm -hmm. especially the kids, the younger generation on how to do recycling, why we need to do recycling. What's the importance of it? Yeah, and most importantly, we need to close the gap, narrow the gap between education and the facilities to make it happen yeah. in okay. the country. That sounds okay. awesome. Yeah. Okay. Actually, I can add an anecdotal story to that. 18 years ago, when I finished my master's degree in the UK, I attended an environmental management training course uh -huh. and Tetra Pak was the only company there present uh, and their history of actually looking at internal environmental management, wow. product related and operational efficiency mm -hmm. is as a very, very long tradition. So Even 18 years ago? Yeah. I, well, we started 60 yeah. years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was quite, you know, so there is a, 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 a long history a long that history. I had in terms of, you know, getting exposed to the work, to yes. the good work that Tetra Pak is doing. I mean, we're looking at this and I think for mothers, our fathers out there, I mean, forget about buying Fisher Price and paying like $300. Yeah. I mean, that's yes. as good as a Fisher Price toy you know yes. I mean you and it's the one thing is you're telling your child look these are you know recycled items so use it get mm. imaginative do something with yes. it isn't it yes. um, but I think most importantly we're talking about recycling especially with the younger generation um, education uh, awareness should be um, emphasized to more of the parents so what are the steps of doing that bringing the awareness to the parents yes. yeah because oh. we, we wouldn't know that we could do this. So. Mm -hmm. right. If we did. And these are really solid you stuff. You know what I'm going to do yeah. with my car, my <laughs> cartons, right? There. Thank yeah. you. Oh. Well, that's, that's good for us because <laughs> yeah. we've inspired. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. we'll be inspiring more people to do this at home. Um, you know what? This kind of competitions, it's for, um, I mean, they are for kids. Yeah. But we also reach out to the parents because yes. the parents themselves are very engaged in this competition. Mm. We've had a lot of parents coming in asking us how yeah. to do this mm. what angle are you coming from you know what kind of criteria are you looking at and we asked the kids ourselves oh, yeah. right during the presentation times and like so did your mom help you with this and they go like no <laughs> <laughs> but there was one mom there, there she was, was explaining it and it sounded like you know your she had designed was, some mm, of it yeah so. but 
<laughs> but but I guess it's great because yeah. it, it, yeah, it, it, it engages like the whole family. Yeah, and that's, that's right. one thing I've experienced in my past work, that often the most effective way to get to the older generation is through the kids. Yeah. Because true. once the kids start, hey, mommy, daddy, you know, what are we doing about the planet? Then they why, get... Why are we... Yes. I, I remember giving this talk in uh, Dubai at the international school there, mm -hmm. and then the Malaysian Airlines yeah. manager, in, oh, you're the green man. <laughs> Since my kids went to your talk, they keep asking me to switch off the water <laughs> when I do the washing. So kids can actually carry the message yeah. and inspire parents right. to realize that this is important because it's about the future generation. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yes. And uh, it's very interesting that you said that because I think it's only through them that uh, the awareness mm. it starts building, as you yeah. say, you know, a little lip ripple and it just becomes yes. a huge one. Yes. Now, uh, we urban folks, I think we have mm -hmm. the advantage of being exposed to a lot of these things. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, it's more that rural folks, mm. I, and this is my personal belief, that they don't get this much of exposure. Mm -hmm. So in your case, for instance, Matthias and of course Manju, um, do you then now bring this awareness out to the schools that are outside of the urban area? Because I think that's where you need to really reach into. Because I believe the awareness is not, or rather it's lacking in mm -hmm. that area. Mm -hmm. um, your take on that? I have done a couple of uh, eco-awareness talks mm -hmm. in uh, what I would call remote places mm -hmm. where individuals ask me to come in and I've always enjoyed that because I'm a kampung boy myself mm -hmm. and uh, I grew up with mother nature right. but I sometimes experience that the people there are more open mm. towards reconnecting back with mother nature mm -hmm. and usually their environmental impact is much lower because the rural folk they don't buy so much stuff they usually have a lot less waste they maybe even have their own garden mm -hmm. so to get the message across is sometimes easier yep. Uh, to the rural folk and I think some of the people we had uh, participating in the contest yeah. yes they are going to a school here or they are going to a college here but they are actually from very different remote yes. places wow. I mean some of our winners were from Indonesia mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. from Tar College, from Klantan, uh, as well. from Klantan yeah, and Sarawakian so, yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So amazing. It, it, it's w the, the competition itself, because it was online, mm. yes. it, it was actually moving around and it was even going to remote places rather than just being KL focused. All right. Okay. Now, uh, this uh, competition is over and done with. Yes. What's happening next? I yes. think you would what have probably inspired a lot of people out there to come <laughs> forward and <laughs> you know, look up your website to see what else yes. is going on. Yeah, Future definitely. Um, we are always, always coming up with new initiatives new to engage consumers from all ages um, when it comes to environmental awareness. In fact, one is going to be, I'm not giving away any <laughs> <laughs> secrets because I want people to go to our website and okay. check out what's our latest um, campaign, but one is going to be launched very, very, very soon uh -huh. uh, within the week. Mm -hmm. And we hope this one, this particular campaign will be also a big one okay and it will have um, an interesting twist interesting. to it this year like never done before and wow. we believe it's the first kind of um, <laughs> this kind of initiative in Malaysia so we hope to get a lot of people involved because we definitely need as many people so this, as is, possible. this is the information on your website Yes, it's yeah. going to be on our website. Your website week. is? Um, www.tetrapack.com.my right. oh, So there you go. <laughs> okay. So, um, Matthias, uh, before we, we let you go, um, can we give one very simple step to start being green? Mm. What? Mm. The most important. As <laughs> hey. uh, get, get, get this. <laughs> as, as, we have, as we have talked about waste, try and be more conscious when you actually throw things in the bin, yeah. how could I have avoided that? Or how, how could I recycle it? How can I recycle it? it? Or how I, can I reuse, repurpose it? We call this yeah. upcycling. Mm -hmm. upcycling. Using something that you consider has no value and is waste right. and turn it into a valuable product oh. that is of higher value sure. because you just add a little zip to it suddenly it gets a new life a new functionality be creative and look at your waste at home how can you breathe new life 
into your ways. There you go. All right. Okay. Well, Manju, Matthias, thank you so much for joining us this morning. You're and yes, uh, <laughs> as Man Matthias mentioned, uh, two things. One, look at your waist and see how you can change it. Two, look up Tetra Pak's website because they're coming up with something very interesting yes. this week, as Manju mentioned. She's not letting the cat out of the bag. So <laughs> you just have to go and see that website. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, for you out there, stay with us. We've got another beautiful performance coming by Kalei Dance Group. So take it away. Yes.